one of the reasons for demonetization was to, as you said, Paytm, to digitize, mm -hmm. to become a less cash society. That throws up business opportunities. Are you looking for business opportunities in India, digitized or otherwise? Well, you know, uh, yeah, I don't talk much more about, about my portfolio, but we do have a few investments in India. We have uh, uh, investments in the banking sector. And I think they just got a tailwind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't invest because of that. <laughs> okay. Because Pres uh, Prime Minister Modi whispered something in my ear. But uh, uh, but I think yeah. The my sense is that the uh, the good banks mm -hmm. will do well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that of course the PTMs of the world will do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think yeah. So that uh, that part of the uh, economy mm -hmm. will get a, a shot in the arm, mm -hmm. uh, quite a significant shot in the arm. Uh, but I think other parts of the economy will as well because, you know, now you have the ability to uh, basically use those resources that are sitting idle mm -hmm. in all over the economy. The banking system, system is a conduit. Absolutely. And uh, so I think it, it should do quite well. Um, what part of the banking system do you like? Because now we can say that we have a whole range. We have uh, public sector banks, the large ones and uh, probably very proficient uh, professional ones like State Bank of India. As it goes down, perhaps the policy dwindles a bit. Then you have private banks. Again, you have yeah. a whole range over there. Now you have small banks and now practically anyone can get a banking license. Uh, and then there are, of course, the non-bank finance companies. What looks Well, I think the, the, the critical factor is um, you know, anytime you're investing in, uh, in uh, leveraged financial institutions, uh, you have to understand uh, whether they are competent in lending and uh, whether they are ethical in their reporting. You know, because uh, okay. what shows up as reserves or what shows up as book value is a judgment. Exactly. And uh, so, so you, want, moving book you, you, you need to make sure that the people who come up with those numbers are competent in what they do and they're honest, right. they're honest and trustworthy. So uh, one of the difficulties with uh, the banking sector or the financial sector in India is um, large numbers of players uh, aren't really good at the lending end, mm -hmm. right? So they end up, and we've seen that in yes. a lot. So I would, I would say that uh, quality matters mm -hmm. and paying up for quality in this particular case probably is a good idea. So there is a, you know, there's a huge differential in the, in the uh, market capitalizations or the multiples of the HDFCs of the world versus many of their yeah. uh, peers which are either state-owned or uh, semi-private or private. And some of those uh, differences are justified. Okay. Uh, so I would say that uh, the key is to ensure uh, that you're dealing with uh, an entity that is focused on uh, making sensible loans mm -hmm. and is able to collect on those loans. Okay. What else do you like in the India space now? Again, I mean, uh, I, even if you don't want to reveal what will be your next investment, uh, what's doing well? Well, you know, like, uh, in fact, this morning I was listening to you okay. uh, interviewing uh, uh, some uh, some guests, and I think the like there was a discussion of Asian Asian paints. Is yes, right. And That's I've right. I've never really looked at uh, Asian paints, and I think. Uh, the discussion was about how they've come down quite a bit. I think like, yes, the like price has fallen. 25% yes. or so. So I think that, you know, those, those are businesses, uh, you know, tremendous brands, uh, great execution, and huge tailwinds. I mean, uh, let me put it bluntly, when I'm coming in from the air, India needs a paint job. <laughs> okay? okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, so my sense is that, um, uh, you know, the, the thing is that when I first invested in India, it was in 1995, and uh, I made um, I made four investments, okay. and two of them were courier companies okay. because I felt at that time I was a very new investor that India's postal system just doesn't do it right. Okay. So I invested in Blue Dart and Skypack in '95, uh, and then uh, I invested in uh, Kotak Mahindra okay. because uh, they were my broker, and I was just so impressed By this, uh, yeah. because they were just very impressive, and every person I dealt with was so good uh, that that was actually my last, like a last minute thing. And then I had invested in an, an IT company, uh, Satyam, okay. and uh, and of course what happened is that. Uh, I did very well with Satyam. It was more than 100x, and and like a like a stupid person, I sold um, all the other stocks, Blue okay. Dot. I, I held them for about six years, 
and uh, they said, okay, you know, we've had a good run, and we'll. Uh, I mean, okay. I'd, I'd made more than 100x on, on India at that time, but I looked back and I said that was one of the dumbest things I did because Kotak's run from 2000 to 2016. Incredible. Yeah, and and you know what was so difficult for me, all I needed to do was sit on my ass and do nothing, <laughs> and I didn't do that, and so. Um, so uh, the lesson I learned uh, from that is that when you have the good fortune of an ownership stake in a business with great economics and a business run by great management, uh, the best thing that you can do is do nothing. You know, if you're able to buy it at a good price, uh, just, just, just sit on it for a while. So I would think that at this point, there are lots and lots of companies in India that are probably... Uh, dropped in price and especially when you see these dislocations yes. you'll see some portions of the market really go down quite a bit uh, so there may be some hidden gems okay. um, so uh, I I am definitely going to spend a little bit more time on India now because the uh, the because the basement the, prices the, are available. The va valuations are good. We have the strong dollar. Yes. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, good buying currency. And so uh, I, am, I am very bullish on India. How does the IT space look at this point in time? It has been one of the big wealth generators for Indian investors. Yeah. Now there is this Trump cloud that uh, has its own uh, uh, impact on... Well, so, uh, so I think, I think uh, people may be surprised but I think uh, Donald Trump is more likely to take action which is favorable to Indian okay. IT companies okay. than any US president has done in a while. So he understands that today a person on an H-1 visa going to the US, it takes them 15 years uh, to get a green card. Okay. And with those types of uh, length of time, talent is not going to leave India Absolutely. and uh, one of the things that Trump understands in fact he made a statement recently he says we want the smart ones okay okay he says we want to keep the the, the criminals out yep. but we want the smart ones. so uh, I have a, a strong faith that with the Republican Congress and 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 Donald Trump that they will try to craft policies which encourages immigration by desirable demographics into the US and one of those desirable demographics is tech workers in fact he just met the tech industry okay. people I'm sure this is one of the number one thing on the minds of the Satya Nadella's and Absolutely. Sundar Pinchai's and all these guys you know when I go on the Google campus uh, seventy percent of the engineers I see are Indians or Chinese uh, Google could not exist if, if, if the US wasn't bringing in talent so uh, so I believe that uh, Donald is likely to uh, make some changes on that front. So that's one piece. The second is that it's easier than ever before to have work done anywhere, right? So that the whole uh, seamlessness of borders just becomes more and more so with cloud computing and and all of that. So um, I I believe that even even with um, you know, kind of fixing the immigration system and allowing more numbers in, it will be very attractive for U.S. Uh, tech firms to have significant presence in India. Uh -huh. So I believe that that presence will keep rising. In fact, the the issue is going to be, can India produce enough talent? Oh, well, uh, Monish, a final question to you. We are stepping into 2017. Does it look like a better year for the global economy? I mean, right from Lehman, uh, from 2008, uh, we've looked forward to that big 4% growth. But, uh, you know, the world has been actually ambushed with uh, either a Brexit or a Grexit or a Chinese devaluation. Every year has brought its own mm -hmm. uh, red flags and ambushes. Will 2017 be a better year of growth? So, India has natural tailwinds. It is, I think, either the fastest or second fastest yes. uh, growing true. largest economy that is not going to be derailed long term i don't know whether what happens in 2017 okay. uh, i don't focus on that yes but i would just say that we have a young population uh, we have a population that's getting more skilled uh, they're getting more educated uh, we have the government trying to do a number of good things a lot of things to be done so i would say that i don't look at it so much as 2017 but I would say that if you looked at 2020, 2025, 2030, uh, it is phenomenal. And, and I think that uh, for, the, for the viewers you have, many of them 
are uh, young, they're early in their careers, yes, yes. they've got decades of earning power ahead, the important thing that they need to do is don't try to second guess, don't try to figure out uh, how to time the market, don't try to do all, all those things. If you're a know-nothing investor, just dollar cost average into a low cost index fund, do it month after month, forget what the uh, noise and the pundits and everything else, and you're going to wake up 30, 40 years from now super wealthy. Okay, that's a big advice coming. Just put your money bit by bit, uh, SIP, sip by sip. Yeah. We call it systematic investment yeah, yeah. plan into an index fund and you will still find yourself wealthy. That's the message coming from someone who has made his money by investing bit by bit into good businesses, owning good businesses. That's Monish Prabhra for you. Thank you so Thank much you. for spending time with us. All right, great. It's a pleasure.